In this video I'm going to go over how to make a door in C++. This is going to be a quick and easy sliding door. By the end you'll know how to create a door with the box component and when you overlap the box component the door will slide open like so. I started out with a basic C++ template with starter content and now I'm going to go ahead and create a new class. This is going to be an actor and I'm going to call this sliding door. And once that's done, we can switch into Visual Studio. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create static mesh. And then I'm going to initialize it in the constructor. In order to initialize it, I'm going to need to bring in the constructor helpers, so I'm just going to paste that header in here. And now we can call the create default subobject method. And we want to pass in a static mesh component into the template and give it a name of static mesh. And I'm also going to need to bring in the static mesh component header file into this file, like so. This should be static mesh component. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead back into the header and let's make this a U property. And we'll make it edit anywhere. So we can set what the mesh we, the mesh we want to be in the editor. So we can switch back into the editor, hit compile. And once that's done, we can derive a blueprint from our C++ class. I'm just gonna call this sliding door underscore BP. and we have a static mesh component in our blueprint, we can go ahead and set that to whatever we want. I'm just going to set it to the door from the starter content. And hit compile. And if we drag that out into the world, it has a door. Back into Visual Studio. We're going to want a separate root component from the static mesh because of how we're going to set up uh, the movement of the door. So we're going to say this root component. And we're going to create another Subobject and it's going to be a scene component. I'll just call this root. And now we need to take our static mesh and attach it to the root. To do that, we um, call the static mesh the um, attach to component method on our static mesh. The component we want to attach to is the root component and we need to pass in some attachment transform rules. I'm just going to say keep relative transform. Now we can go ahead and set up how we want to open the door, how, it, how that functionality is going to work. So first thing we need to do is define how far we want the door to slide. So I'm just going to create a property called slide distance. I'm going to set it to zero for now. And back in the source file, or actually first let's make a method called open and have it return void and back in our source file we can make our definition for it what we want to do in here is we want to take our static mesh and we want to move it so we're just going to add relative location We need to pass an f vector into here. Now we need to figure out which direction we want the door to slide. So let's go back into here and look at our blueprint. We can see that the static mesh for our door is lined up in the y direction. So I'm just going to um, add add relative location in the y direction. So pass in zero for x. We're going to pass in slide distance for y and zero for Z. So now we need to test that. So I'm just gonna call open and begin play. And back into the editor, compile. Okay, and then once that's done, let's bring the door out into the world. Okay, sometimes this happens. Um, a quick restart of the editor will usually solve it. So I'm gonna do that real fast. Okay, now after restarting, we can see that it is attached to the root component properly. 
whenever you modify a constructor, that just sometimes happens. Let's go ahead and test our open function. Set this right here on the edge so we have a reference point and hit play. And oh, I forgot to set the slide distance. So in the editor, we need to make the uh, slide distance a U property. And we'll just make it edit anywhere. Compile again. And then once that's done, we can hit begin play and oh, we gotta set the slide distance. So we set this to 100, compile it, hit play, and it worked. So our door is moving over 100 units. We don't want the door to just open on begin play. We want it to open on a trigger. So back in Visual Studio, let's go ahead and remove open from begin play. And we, get, we are going to need a trigger of some sort. I'm going to use a box component, which I'm going to go ahead and go into the documentation, copy and paste the header file path. And now we need to add that to our constructor. So, oh, we need to create a property first. This is going to be a U property. I'll make this edit anywhere as well. And it's going to be a U box component. And I'm going to call this a trigger. And then in our constructor, we can initialize it by using the create default sub object, pass in a, a U box component into our, our template. And we'll give it a name of trigger. And we also need to attach this to the root component. We are also going to need to create a, we need to listen for overlap events on the trigger. In order to use a function to handle overlap events, you need to declare it as a U function. And I'm just going to call this on trigger overlap. Now the this function has a specific signature we're going to need, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Okay, this is the this is the signature for the function. It takes in a oops, I missed the U. Takes in a primitive component pointer, an actor pointer, another primitive component pointer. Uh, an int32, a bool, and a const f hit result. Uh, we're not actually going to need any of those for what we're doing, but the function has to have that signature in order to use it as our delegate. Next thing we need to do is on the trigger, find the on component begin overlap. There it is. And we need to use add dynamic. This isn't going to show up in the list. And that's because this is a macro and not a class method. And then the parameters we need to pass in are this and a reference to our function we just created, which is going to be sliding door on trigger overlap. All right, so now we can define this function. I need that signature in here like so. For now, I'm just going to log something out to make sure this is working. So I'm just going to say log 10, make it warning, and say trigger was overlapped. All right, now let's go ahead and compile this. And once that's done compiling, if we bring our, our blueprint back out, we can see that we have this box on our door. So in the blueprint, let's go ahead and line that up a little better. So in the viewport, center it. I'm not going to make this perfect. I'm just going to make this good enough. In the shape, I'm going to set this x direction to 100 should be good. Compile it. All right, now let's see if it works. Yep, so when I overlap it, we can see in our log down here, I'm getting trigger was overlapped. I'm back in Visual Studio. We know that we are handling overlap events inside this function. 
So now what we want to do is simply call open. Okay, so sometimes when you recompile, it's going to reset some of your values. So I'll go back in here. Yeah, slide distance, set that back to 100. And play. Oops. Door there. Play. And when you overlap, it moves the door. Right now, it's just going to keep moving the door over to the left 100 units every time we overlap the trigger. Obviously, not what we want. Uh, back in Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and create the close function. Also create a u function and this is going to be void on trigger and overlap. And this is going to be our delegate. Uh, this also has a specific signature we need which is different from the on trigger begin overlap. This one takes a primitive component pointer, an actor pointer, a primitive component pointer, and an int32. Let's go ahead and go back over here. Alright, now back in our constructor we need to create the delegate for it on end overlap. So on component component end overlap add dynamic and for now we just want to pass in close So let's go ahead and say this static mesh. Now we could just add relative location and pass in the negative value of our slide distance, but because of the inherent inaccuracy of float path, it's better to just set it directly to zero. Otherwise, if you open and close the door enough, you'll probably end up offset from your origin. F vector, and we'll say zero vector. Now back over here and compile. Okay, so the compile failed because I didn't pass in a reference. Let's go ahead and fix that and let's try again. Okay, let's give this a shot. Um, I'm going to set the slide distance again. Okay, now we overlap and it opens and we leave the trigger and it did not work. Okay, so I got it working again. What I did was I deleted the blueprint and went back in here and recreated the blueprint again from the C++ class that have fixed it. So now the door is snapping from open to closed instantly. And that's not what we want to do. We want it to slide open and slide closed. To do that, we need to determine over time the position between open and close and set that as our position. Back into Visual Studio, let's go ahead and create a function called transition. It's going to need a delta time. We want to use a function called, what is it called? F interp const2. We want to pass in the current position of our, of our mesh. We need to think about what is changing in our position vector, and that is the y value. So all we need to do is say this static mesh uh, relative location and then just pass in the y value so that's what's going to be changing our target for now let's just focus on opening the door so our target is going to be this slide distance 
delta time is the parameter that we're passing in and we're going to end up getting that from tick we're going to be calling transition inside of tick and we're going to be passing in the delta time and then the last parameter this takes is interp to speed i'm going to set this to 50 and we'll just see if that is good enough and this returns a float value so i'm going to say float uh, updated updated y position we need to set this new y position as as our new well as our new y position so let's say this static mesh set relative location and we're going to pass another f vector we're going to pass in zero for, for x the updated y position for y and zero for z oops updated y position and zero for z we need to create two for now we'll just say one bool as a class property and it's going to be is transitioning and we'll set it to false now open just going to say this is transitioning is true okay and then in tick we need to call transition so is transitioning oops no this transition and pass in delta time one more thing for transition we want to say we want to say if is if this is transitioning then we want to do this stuff let's go ahead and try that now if we hit play and walk into the trigger it slowly opens you probably want it to be a little bit faster than that but i'm not going to bother with that as we can see when we leave the trigger it is setting the position back to zero but because is transitioning is still true it's going to just open again go back in here what we want to do now is create another bool and say is open and set that to false now uh, when we call open we want to set is open to true now in, in transition we want to another thing we should be doing actually we should be making sure that oops this static mesh and we want to make sure that this is not null because if we if we forget to set the static mesh in the editor and load the game and transition it's called if we try to dereference the static mesh without checking if it's null it's going to crash if we just do this check that's going to prevent that so now inside of these braces we want to check if we're opening the door and if we're opening the door we want to do that and then we can do an else and then inside of here is where we would handle closing the door but we're not going to do that right now once the door is completely open we don't want to continually compute this this new y position because it's already open we're not going to be moving the door anymore so it's it's just a waste of cpu time to, in, in, to compute to keep computing this number what we're going to want to do is flip this is transitioning bool to false when we have reached our open position to do that and just do we're going to want another if statement and we want to use fmath and use is nearly equal we're checking for the static meshes uh, relative location the y position and we want to see if it is equal to our open position or our slide distance I'm just going to use 0.5 for the tolerance So if these if our values are equal then we can just say this static static mesh set relative location and we can pass in a vector 
we can just pass in the open position. And then we can set is transitioning to false. And now we can go ahead and take care of uh, handling open or uh, close. It's going to be basically the same thing, except now we're checking our Y position is zero. And if it's zero, then we want to set this to zero. And transition is going to be false. And we're actually sliding the door open. We're just going to change, or close, I mean, uh, we're just going to change this. The target value for the Y position is just going to be zero. So on close, we just have to say this is transitioning is true. And this is open is false. And compile again and run it. Now the door slides open and it should slide close, which it does. That's all there is to it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you have any suggestions for future topics you might want me to cover, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do.